Welcome to worship on this beautiful, sunshiny fall morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I see that we don't have any first time uh, visitors here with us today. We're just all family here. So let me give the announcements for today. Member updates. I visited with the Roofs on this last week up in Winsboro, and they send their love and everything. And it just so happens that as Joanne sends their monthly offerings and tithe to the church, um, she's good about sending a funny card and stuff to humor Laura and I and everything. And as it turns out, bless her heart, she must have been Russian, but she put the wrong address on the card uh, on, on her given this particular month. And it just so happens that the mail carrier delivered it down to the Eau Claire Presbyterian Church. And they tried to put it back in the box to say wrong address, wrong church. And it's got Lutheran Ascension, Ascension Lutheran Church on it, but just with their address down on the other end of Wildwood. And so bless the secretary's heart or the musician's heart there at Eau Claire uh, Presbyterian. They brought it, they called us and brought the the card to us, the given to us, the day before I went to visit the roofs. So I was able to let them know that we did receive it and everything and how there was this little mishap, but it did get corrected. And so we, we had a good visit together. Um, I spoke with Dolores Richardson on this past week and she, uh, there's a COVID breakout at, at the Generations in um, Chapin and so haven't been able to get there to her. That's been over a week now that that's the case. And, um, and she says to let you all know she's still unhappy being in generations, you know, and not in her house. Make sure you let the congregation know that I'm unhappy. And so I let you all know as she asked me to. And so I visited with David Lever and communed him on last week and Pat Martin visited and communed her in her transitioning stage as I've let you all know that she is on hospice and she's bedridden and sleeping and not eating and continue to lift up the Martins and, you know, in, the, in your prayers and David as well. Uh, turns out Reuben, Reuben Jordan here, who uh, is, is a, a part of us, we may not see him that often, but bless his heart, he's struggling with, is it a jawbone, jawbone dance that, and he's gonna have to have this major surgery, right? It's, you guess. Um, we won't even go into detail, but Nancy knows more about what's going on with Reuben. And, but let's, let's keep Reuben lifted in our prayers because it's serious what, what the case may be um, with this jawbone shifting and whatever the procedure is. He's being seen by a specialist to get that corrected. So let, it, let him know we're keeping him lifted in prayer, Nancy. Be nice and do that, okay? Okay. All right, I'm holding you to it. And so, even on this day, we, uh, we will be singing from the Red Hymn, O-E-L-W. And we'd like to welcome back Miss Christine Counts Davis. Welcome her back as our visiting and uh, guest musician on today. Christine has been here with us several times before, so she's familiar with us here. We'd like to welcome her back today. Uh, today is a special day because we have a new member coming aboard here at Ascension today. We're going to welcome receive and welcome Michelle Roseland into our, con into our community here on today. And we look, look forward to that. That's a God thing. It's a good thing because it's a God thing. All right, and so what we're gonna do is make sure that Michelle is out front when we get ready to leave a process out today so that she can be welcomed to this church as a new family member here among us. Uh, council members, we will meet in the fellowship hall immediately following worship for the council meeting. Yay, says all the council members. Okay. And then this office will be closed this Thursday and Friday. Can you believe it's Thanksgiving? And I'm in Christmas already. <laughs> okay. But it's Thanksgiving this week. This Thursday is Thanksgiving. And so the office will be closed Thursday and Friday in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Then next Sunday, no Sunday school, we ended our Sunday school series on Romans in the book of Romans. We ended that today, this morning. Uh, and then next Sunday will be the coffee break, coffee talk fellowship. Uh, that's next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the, in the fellowship hall with coffee and donuts. And, uh, and then the, uh, 
let's see, then the first Sunday of December is the first Sunday of Advent, and our Sunday school lesson will be an Advent lesson uh, beginning on that first Sunday in December. Our Christmas trees will be going up that last week in November. We put them up the week after Thanksgiving if Thanksgiving doesn't fall in the week before um, Advent. And so we have someone to put up the trees. Brian Martin, Pat Martin's grandson, bless Brian heart, his heart, he lets me know. Pastor Jackie, the, Brian Smith already knows what, it, what, what a task it is to try to get those trees up. And so we have Brian Martin who has already volunteered and said, just let me know what day you need me to come. We're kind of looking at the Wednesday of next week, possibly as the day that we'll have Brian come if there's anybody who wants to come and give a hand. It's, it's, it's a tedious job to get those, those trees up and white and get all the lights working on them. But I, and Laura and I, we're always a part of it, and then we need somebody to help put the ornaments on. So if you feel like coming, and we'll let it be known what day it is. It should be, uh, we're going to try to schedule it for, this, for next Wednesday, and then it would be after 5 o'clock or what have you, if someone wants to come and give us a hand with it. Um, uh, let's see, what are we having now? Okay, this season. I believe that's all my announcements at this time. Wait a minute, there's one other thing. Um, there's nobody here today, literally, who have always been lifetime members of Ascension. I don't think even Catherine Garen was scheduled to be here today, and she's out sick with the cold. But from the time that I've been here, the 12 years that I've been here, there were quite a few people here that have roots in this community, in the Eau Claire community, grew up here, uh, went to school here, and so the neighborhood changed drastically. But the Eau Claire High School up there on the corner of Monticello and Columbia College Drive, they have been given a free Thanksgiving meal, all the trimmings and everything for the past seven years. And I always hear about it when it's over or whatever. Well, this time I was told in advance that they were having it. And I'm telling you, I went up there yesterday and I got to meet the principal who I hadn't met at Eau Claire High School and everything, and I just said, well, there's still a good presence here in this community. Even though the demographics and everything have changed, the Eau Claire High School, they gave a free, and they had all the food you can eat. Um, turkey, ham, you know, yellow rice, the gravy, the stressing, the macaroni and cheese. The, and the guy was on TV yesterday, the cook, saying he was up all night cooking yams, all night long, the yams and all of that, and that his dressing wasn't stove top, it was the real, di it was good. And so I just thought, I said, well, I'm gonna make this announcement to our church, which is in the Eau Claire community, and whether you live here in the community or not, or whether you have anybody who attends the Eau Claire High School, and which nobody here does, I still want it to be known that that school, which is a landmark of this neighborhood that our church is a part of, is still doing good things here in the community. And naturally, you know they had a big turnout. Free food, okay. And it was, it was good fellowship for me, and, um, and um, the food was good. I even got to ta have a takeout box, bring. Okay, if there are no other announcements, any other announcements? If there are no other announcements at this time, let us stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake to you. We are not faithful to you, your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are affected by sin that provides your love and unity. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us through Jesus. You are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us 
from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord, the love, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom. And prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7, 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, 
because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a fool, a terrible end, he will make all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Our next reading comes from Psalms chapter 90, verse 1 through 12, and it is a responsive reading. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength, even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Our second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for the day of surprise, for the day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Mm -hmm. Words that banish hate and fear, words that bring eternal life, the gospel of Jesus Christ. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus, more about Jesus we would hear, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. For Jesus said, for it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants 
and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent more. Take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And our Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we have come to that time of the church year which directs our focus on the actual passing of time and the manner in which we pass that time regarding the nearness of the kingdom of heaven. And in the meantime, in between time, before the end times in which we live. And last Sunday's gospel lesson of the parable of the ten bridesmaids, five wise and five foolish, there was this theme of passing time and of being prepared. A credible moral of that lesson was don't fall asleep on the job. Or don't let the good Lord catch you with your work undone. This theme of preparation is depicted in today's reading of 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, where the Apostle Paul warns, For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So then let us not fall asleep, as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Likewise, in today's gospel lesson, once again, Jesus, in making reference to the kingdom of heaven, uses another eschatological, meaning the end time. Eschatological, meaning the end time. Jesus uses another parable 
the parable of the talents, which speaks to the passing of time and the wisdom of preparation. This is another familiar story of three servants to whom their Lord, let's say master, before taking a journey and trust into their care, measures of weight and coinage called talents. Whereas the thought of a single coin, I know for me, let me just speak for me, the thought of a single coin comes to mind at the mention of the word talent. No S on it, no whatever, talent. I'm thinking single coin. It is noted that a talent's value could amount to 15 to 20 years wages for an average worker. That's a huge sum of money. It is also noted that in today's currency, a talent could actually be equivalent to a million dollars. Wow, that's a huge sum of money. In addition to a talent being a measure of weight and coinage, we are most familiar with the meaning of the word talent as ability, the ability to do, a gift, so to speak. It is specified in the text that talents were given to the servants, each according to his own ability. On this regard, theologian William Barclay in his commentary, the Gospel of Matthew, writes this. Barclay writes, this parable tells us that God gives men different gifts. It is not one's talent which matters, what matters is how one uses it. God never demands from a man abilities which he has not got. But God does demand that a man should use to the full the abilities which he does possess. Men are not equal in talent, but men can be equivalent. Men can be equal in effort. And so, end of quote. Let me say that again. Men are not equal in talent, but men can be equal in effort. Now, mind you, Barclay's use of the term man is to be taken as humankind. You know, because, of course, the Bible, uh, Scripture is written as such, you know, where it refers to the, the male uh, pronoun or what have you, but uh, it, it's humankind. So here in today's text, whereas one servant is given five talents, another servant two talents, and a third one one talent, each of them receives a sizable lump sum of money to manage. As the story goes, the master's return is delayed for some time. During this passing of time, both the servants with the five and the two talents, no doubt, Though they, through this wise investing of theirs, they double what they each were given. While the servant with the one talent digs a hole in the ground and buries the talent in hiding. So when the master finally returns, the first two servants receive his praise for their wise and fruitful labor over the passing of time. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The one talent servant who instead of investing it over the passing of time, you heard it in your, it was read in your hearing. When he returns it to the master, he is met with judgment. Master has it taken from him and given to the new, to the now ten talents servant. Now, regarding the one talent servant, perhaps a credible moral would be if you don't use it, you lose it. You ever heard that, heard that phrase used? You know, that if you don't use it, you lose it. In addition to being stripped of his one talent, the servant is scolded. You wicked and lazy servant, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. In the end, 
this unprofitable servant is ordered by his master to be cast into the outer darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now granted, however, the third servant doesn't, he does rightfully get what he deserves because of his fear, spitefulness, and self-serving motives. That is what we see of this one servant who was given the one talent. But here still, I like to play devil's advocate on, on that servant's behalf, that at least he does not squander his Lord's money away as he could have done. Actually, it is not as if the wicked and lazy servant does absolutely nothing with the one talent. The little he does is he digs a hole. That's labor, okay? He digs a hole for the talent's safekeeping. But look at where it gets him. What worked against him most was that because his Lord was gone for a long period of time, the safekeeping method for the talent does not draw interest. It's fruitless. It is not put to good use. And certainly, there are times when we, each of us, might find it best to play it safe rather than taking a risk by holding back on the use of our God-given talents. This is where I'm getting ready to talk about talents as the ability, our talents and gifts. When it comes to making changes, trying something new and different, there is this fear factor. We've always done it this way. We're not changing it. Nobody likes change. It's the fear factor. Often, this mindset can be seen as wasted opportunities. What a sad commentary. Now, such is the case with the judgment of this unprofitable servant who was given the one talent. He gets cast into the outer darkness again, where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That was his reward for his little efforts. Thus, this parable of the talents was not told by Jesus. Get this as an example of money management. That's not what the, the moral of this story is here. But again, it's about the use of one's abilities and gifts. That's the message for us. One's attitude and preparation in the passing of time as the coming of our Lord draws near. God forbid that we bury our God-given abilities and talents, our gifts, and not put them to use. God knows what each of us is capable of, and as we discussed in the Sunday school lesson, everybody has a gift. And my gift may not be what your gift is. Some people have more gifts than others, but there is a gift that everyone has that can be used in the kingdom of God and in the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. God knows what each of us is capable of and God does not require any more of that that we are capable of doing. That's a good thing. So here I'm reminded of today's Sunday school lesson as I mentioned early. Today's Sunday school lesson which was the ending of our Romans study series. Uh, today's lesson was titled, What Does God Want From Us? In other words, how are we to live our lives pleasing to God? As God is faithful, God honors our faithfulness. Know this, as God is a faithful God, God honors each of our faithfulness in whatever way it's used, whatever the way it's exercised. As in today's parable, whereas the servants who were given the five and the two talents proved to be faithful with what each was given, the Lord, their master, in honoring their faithfulness with the few things gave to them ruler over many things. He found them to be worthy 
of being entrusted with many things. You're faithful over a little. That's why it's always been said to uh, a, a pastor or someone who's called into ministry. You can be called to a small congregation, just a few handful of people. But if you be faithful with those few, God can raise you up and promote you and put you in a place where you have uh, so many people you won't even have time to minister to them all individually. That's how God works in the kingdom. And some people, and the Bible, there's a scripture that says in the Old Testament that says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Don't despise, don't despise smallness. There's value in being faithful over what little one has. God and God's faithfulness rewards faithfulness. Yes, God does. Whereas like the faithful servants took the risk and invest in what was given to them, so are we to somewhat take risks in life by investing our time, our efforts for the good and the well-being of others, not self-serving at all times. And this is as we walk by faith and not by sight, relying on God's grace, because if it had not been for the grace of God, where or oh, where would we be? Our desire in life should be that in pleasing God, we are willing to take the risk necessary in spreading the gospel to a dying world and to be bold enough to stand for justice where we see injustices, to speak up. God grants to each of us the grace and wisdom to make a difference in this world according to our own abilities. Might we petition the Lord as does the psalmist in today's Psalm 90. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. As we are each called to be faithful servants, we have the assurance that God does reward faithfulness. Just as in the parable, even the master praised and rewarded the first two servants. He expressed how pleased he was with them. As a reward, it looks as if he lets them keep all of the money, both the principal and the profit. As stressed by Jesus in the text, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. On this regard, this is to say that as we walk by faith and not by fear, we are generous in our giving from our resources as we have been blessed. We will reap in abundance. The biblical concept of him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. This speaks to those who, though they may have limited resources and are not willing to give even the least that they have, as if they have nothing to give at all, will surely live in scarcity. There's a principle in giving and being giving of your heart from your heart. Scripture admonishes us, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. The principle is that the more you give, the more is given back to you. And as the Lord in this parable was pleased with his faithful service, I can't express that enough, how much more ought we to live in a manner pleasing to our God in this passing of time? A God who is far more gracious and generous than an earthly master, as in our gospel text today. A God who sent Jesus, God's only son, to bear the sins of a dark world and to die on a cross for the saving of our very souls. Thank God for Jesus, the Lord of light. And lastly, we have the privilege each Sunday, as we gather, we gather around the word, the water, and the table of thanksgiving with grateful hearts to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then for the welcoming of a new member like Michelle here in this fold. 
and for the use of our God-given talents and gifts. What greater reward could we have been, could have been given to each of us? So to each of you on this week, may you and yours have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks be to God and amen. We're standing for the hymn of the day.
You may be seated at this time. And now I'm going to call forth our candidate, Michelle. Face me. You just face me. Okay. All right. You don't turn that way. Just face me. Face me. Okay. Yeah. Not the congregation yet. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism. I present Michelle Roseland, who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism and who desires to be one with us in the body of Christ. We welcome her into the life and ministry of this congregation. And we rejoice that she has found a welcoming home in our congregation. So, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Michelle, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. To the congregation, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Resurrection of the body and the life of God. Amen. Amen. Michelle, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I have tried to help and guide you. People of God, do you promise to support this sister and pray for her in her life in Christ? We do. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Michelle the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I'll now call up our president of the council. Let us welcome our sister in Christ to this faith community. Can we, do we, can we applause as we You know what I'm saying? Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. So just wait right there, Michelle. We, 
we don't let our new members go uh, without some type of welcoming. If it's not a welcome basket, basket, it's a welcome bag. How about this? So we got some things in there for you. How about this is the day which the Lord hath made. Welcome to our, it's kind of, oh, okay. yeah, it seems like it's a little heavy, huh? We got it full in there. So this is a little welcoming uh, package for you to, as you become a part of our faith community here. To God be the glory. Amen? Amen. Uh, amen. Okay. I believe that's it. Are we done here? Okay. Okay. So now we continue with our, with our worship service. Um, okay. I suppose I'll ask you all to stand as you are able. Did I finish the prayer? No. Huh? No. I didn't finish the, okay. Forgive me for my, come back, Michelle, and let me do this thing right. Let me do this thing right. I haven't done it in so long, Pastor Yosem, until, you know what I'm saying? It's been a couple of months. You guys are the last ones, okay? All right, so let us rejoice with Michelle, our sister in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. We give you thanks, O oh God, for our new member received by transfer from another faith community. You have drawn her to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers and in service to others. Amen. Now you may return to your seat. Now you're free to go, as should be. And if you all will remain standing for our song of petition. Your mercy is great. Mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Mm -hmm. Give to all children, youth, and adults a study of word, the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. The mercy is great. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love and community. We especially pray for these members of our church family who are in the hospital, at home, or in care centers. Comfort their hearts and ours with your powerful presence. Tommy Jesus. John Clark, Ava Hudson, David Lieber, Pat Martin, Lisa Mosley, Dolores Richardson, Jean and Joanne Ruth. Debbie Shepard, Charlene Van Patten, Dorothy Van Patten, 
And for those others we name aloud now on our lips or silently in our hearts. Those we have named either aloud on our lips or silently in our hearts, grant each of them a measure of your healing virtue. Hear us, O God. O oh God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace, God, peace. Peace. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and share your abundant blessings. Among them that, as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Into the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least. And give us in generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. May the God of all creation in whose image we are, are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.